So it feels it feels today feels what would be the right word? I'm not sure what word describes it. Yeah. Feels feels slow. Feels feels sad too. What's that? What's that? Oh, um, I I know there is there's a word. There are some words. Say that again. Oh, the lights. Yeah, they don't work here. Oh <laughs> Yeah. Um, curry. A uh, word. Yeah. Maybe. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a good one. And it's hard. It's hard. It's hard for you guys and for me as well. Yeah. So. It's yeah. weird. Okay. I guess let's just let's just jump into it. Um. So today we're gonna talk about uh, databases. And um, who like who can share what maybe preconceptions of of databases and what are what do what are they uh, what do they um, help us with or anything that comes to mind when you hear the word database? People store information. Okay, that's the good point. Anything else re re relating to databases? Organized file. Yeah, that's good. Organized. Malik. I think I'm going to be saying all APIs and databases and not all databases. I think I said that, but with servers. Oh, yeah. But uh, databases are closely related to APIs and web applications. That's why we need to see them, right? That's why we need to know how to do them. Um, let's see how we can do, you know, data. Uh, databases are data sources. Anything else about databases? What about like, where do they live? Okay. They live in tables. Well, the data will live in tables, that's correct. But the database itself, where will the database itself live? On the network. On the network. On where? On, on your computer or your server, right? So, yes, we're gonna, do you guys remember that you install Postgres when you first came here? Postgres. Uh, Postgres is where our databases are going to live, um, and Postgres is a is a database server. So Postgres is a database server. Um, So Postgres is a database server, and uh, yes, they will be like this. Databases will be living in our computers. Uh, once we deploy our applications, those databases will be living on somebody else's computer in the cloud. Uh, let's think about what about the um, and there are there are some computers that are fully dedicated to be databases. Just like I can have a computer to be fully dedicated to be a server. Uh, there are uh, com full computers and rows of computers that are just uh, taking care of storing information uh, and our database servers. Yes, they have to be online the whole They have to be online the whole time. Uh, yes, if you want to have the access to the information the whole time, yeah. 
or at any time. Yes, they will need to be um, live. You can also have, it depends on what you, what, you, what you mean by online, because we could have, we could have a database server in here, like for pursuit, and it will be just for internal uh, data, but they will still be considered to be online because we can access it from here. Um, so cool. So let's look at it. Uh, how does a database fit in our um, in our stack or when what we do? So let's open this image. So here we have been focusing on building these two things: the front end code with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now we saw some back end code. We know how to create a server that replies to some queries, right? This will be like our express servers. Um, and then we're missing the database, right? But why do you think, why do you think we'll need a, a database and why do we want a database? What happens like for instance, when, uh, for what I know Right. Correct. So the database is used for storing information permanently, right? Um, so as as Vanille described, when you're adding a when you're adding a student to a class in the a, in the APIs that you're currently building, uh, you refresh the server and the data is just gone. That is because all that data, all those students or all those classes, are only being saved in memory. In the RAM, of, in the RAM memory of your computer, and then when you refresh or when you restart the server, that just goes away. And that's because servers are on its own; they don't know how to save the information. They don't know how to persist it. Uh, that is what we want to learn. Uh, so yes, databases are um, databases are those are the mechanism that will, is going to allow us to store information permanently. What are some examples of applications you use that save information permanently? Facebook. Facebook. So imagine, the, imagine how much data Facebook has. Right? <laughs> right? And it, that's for every single user. For every single user, it has, has more than 10 years of data. Uh, Facebook was 2006. When was Facebook released? I still remember the time without Facebook. I remember the first, the first when first when Facebook first came. I also remember YouTube. YouTube came 2006. Um, Facebook came around the same time. But imagine from 2003 Facebook. Okay. But that, that was that was probably. It was publicly launched. I see. Uh huh. Uh, cool. So all that information to be stored so for Facebook uh, for Facebook to remind you this is what you did like three years ago, or this is uh, the person that you befriend uh, two years ago. That all that information is stored in a database. And then say that again. That's scary, yeah. That's, that data is saved there permanently. And you think you own that data, but that's not true. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah. So imagine, imagine the computers that Facebook must have to store that amount of data. There are probably buildings like full of computers. Um, to store all that. Cool. So, so that is databases. Um, now, we're gonna be seeing. So there are different kinds of databases. Uh, the the one that we're gonna be seeing here are called relational databases. What do you think this word means in here? Or like, what are some other words for relation or relational? What comes to mind when you read relational? Common. Common. 
common. That's a really good one. Yes. Connection. Connection. When you get out of a relationship, right? Um, so the relational will be also relationship. And these are known as relational database. Postgres is a relational database because the information that is saved in those uh, in that system uh, have connections, have relationships. Uh, we're going to explore a little bit more about that. So also those are known as there's this acronym RB, RDBMS relational database management system. Uh, that is just to describe a database system that is relational. And there are relational databases because there are also non-relational databases that are that, where the data in those databases don't have relationships. For instance, on Facebook uh, databases, there is a relationship between you, the user, and the post that you create, right? So when you go to your wall, is that what it's called? Um, you get all the posts that you have made. Um, there is relationship between um, between you and who you follow or who you're friends with, right? Um, and then there are non-relational databases where uh, information that is stored in those databases uh, don't have any relationship. Or they might have it, but it's not as strong as in the relational database. So let's look at here as an example. Well, also, yeah, so, cool. so we, we have a database is for storing information. Oh, that information, this is important. That information is organized. It's not just information everywhere. That information is organized. Um, and how is it organized? So anyone wants to share how is that information organized? Actually, Ken, that was the, the answer that you gave us earlier. Um, tables. tables. So information inside of databases are stored into tables, just like in a spreadsheet uh, in Excel, that you can create multiple tables, um, and then you put, you know, let's say you have a table for your shopping list uh, of your expenses, for instance. So information is literally saved in tables, like they're actually named um, and it's organized in tables. So here is an example of what a database table will look like. So we could have a database table. So actually, let's do. So a database, you could also describe it as a uh, database. A database is also a collection of tables. So a database, probably like Facebook database, has who knows how many tables, probably hundreds or if not thousands of tables to store every, like different kinds of information. So this is one example. For instance, we have this table that has three columns, right? ID, title, year. This could be, this could be a, a table in a database for a... Maybe uh, the movie review app that we created, or the IMDB, where they keep all movies and information about movies. This could be a table on that database. And what this table is doing, let's call this table like movies. Uh, why? Because, well, we see that the content of the table are movie titles and the year they were released. Right? Note here also what we see about this. It's organized. Data is organized. We see that the IDs are increasing. Uh, we see that we have columns. So tables will have they will have columns and rows. The rows specifically we call records. So we have Uh, 
tables in databases have columns and records or, col or rows. So this table has three columns and five rows. And in this table, we are storing currently uh, five movies. Right. Cool. So imagine now we, so let's think about what if we want to have, what, if we, what are some of the options that we have if we want to have the, the director of these films? What could we do? Let's say I want to not only keep track of the name, uh, the name of the movie uh, and the year, but also the director. What could we do to start to store this in here? Ideas as to how, like, we imagine this is just like a spreadsheet. We have this table. What if I want to also store the director, the name of the director. Peter? Cool. We could create a column for the director. That's a perfectly possible option. Um, what about, so, do movies always have one director? I don't know. Um, Uh, one director. Yeah, so they seem to be possible that a movie will have more than one director. These are some of them. So none. Oh, Superman two. Oh, Matrix. Oh, so they're not that scare. That's uh. Scarce. So, what would we do in that case? We could have, you know, the, another column for the director, but what do we do if we have more than one director? Or let's think about maybe sort of in the, along the same lines. What if we want to have the actors, the actors and actresses of this movie? Uh, let's see, Janesh. Then we can create uh, another table that will keep track of all the um, people who participated in the movie. Uh, maybe it could be actors and extras, um, and then we connect it to tables. So this is why also here this word I think they just share common uh, something that uh, relational databases want to try to avoid is repeat information. Because an, so another solution would have been, oh, we could just add two rows for, let's say, Pulp Fiction, one for Director A and another one for Director B. And then that, that one will still have uh, the movie Pulp Fiction and have the two directors that directed that movie in that case. So that could be one way, but in that case, we are repeating, like, data, which is Pulp Fiction now, is going to be two rows uh, with the exact same information and only one part was going to change. Right? Cool. So how do we connect it then is the question. How could we, let's say we have, uh, let's say we have this table. Um, we could look at some actual tables uh, in a few minutes. How could we look at this? So imagine, let's see, uh, here. Database. Let's look at this. So I'm gonna create. I'm just gonna remove all this. Uh, actually, this is. Let 
let's name this table. This is just for demonstration. This is not actually the code that we're going to write. Um, let's call out one movies. Movies and the other table, let's call it um, actors. Right? And you can ignore. Let's ignore this. Cool. So we have we will have two tables. Uh, the movies we saw that they had the uh, ID. They have the name. Uh, they are going to have the year. And actors. What information about the actor can we have? We can have the actor name. Uh, maybe their their date of date of birth and so on. So we could have two tables just like this. But what we want to accomplish is uh, we want to be able to say X actors belong to Pulp Fiction um, or the actors of uh, Kill Bill Two. Uh, are this many? How could we um, form a relationship between these two kinds of uh, information? So we don't want to have to repeat ourselves and have like repeated movies. Um, but how could we still relate these objects? Paranoid. <laughs> yeah, but what, what, what was that? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's shared. So you connect it by sharing some fields, right? What would the so yes, we want to have to form a connection. We need to share uh, one column. Basically, these two tables are going to share one column. Um, what column would that be? What would it be good for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, so Karen is saying something about. The whatever column we pick will need to be unique from the movies because then how else can we tell uh, what movie um, an actor belongs to? Here, like in that case, we can pick the ID since we we believe this will be unique since there is going in ascending order, and there are movies that can have uh, maybe the same title, and they can be like completely different subjects. Um, they could have there more than one movie can be released on um, X year too, and we know that the likelihood of this being unique uh, is not high. Where we have an ID, probably you know ID of, uh, thinking about what it stands for, uh, an identifier probably should be unique, just like your social security number is unique. Why is that's used for identifying you, right? Cool. So, yeah, so let's have one column shared and let's have that to be the ID. So, what we could do here is then just here in this visual representation, what we could have is that let's have the actors table have a movie ID column so that we end up with something like um, so that we end up with if we have if we have let's say well how many actors let's go actually just do IMDB let's look at for instance something like Pulp Fiction Pulp Fiction so this this website 
is probably getting all this information from a database, like the one that we're just thinking about here. Let's see if we can get the actors. There are some here, major actors. I think there is, oh here, the cast. And we have this many people, Team Roth, uh, etc. And we have, see the full cast. We have a bunch of people. Um, so what we could have is here. Um, so let's imagine, I think I'm going to need to erase this. In our, uh, in our movies table, let's do movies here. We, we have, um, we have some pieces of information. So we're going to have the ID of the movie, the name, and the year. Now let's say we have the ID. The first one is, uh, I think the first one was Pulp Fiction. Let's just do Reservoir Dogs. I'm just going to agree that to our key. Uh, the year is 1992. Uh, to perfection in 1994. And just imagine we have the same for all the others. Now we could have then the actors table where we can have the we can have the IDs, right? Every actor should be uniquely identified in this table. Uh, the next thing that we would like to do is have the movie ID they belong to. Uh, and then let's just do like the name. Um, so the ID, you know, will probably be the same. IDs are oftentimes serial. They will go like increasing from like one. Um, you may also get IDs that are um, that are not serial, that, but they are guaranteed to be unique. Um, there's a few algorithms to generate some of those. Uh, then let's imagine, for instance, uh, what are the name of the two main actors, John Travolta and uh, he? And let's have no, let's have like Brad Pitt here. Um, another actor, Nicholas Cage. is in all fiction that is in the movie table. So when it's just the movie ID, let's sort of make that connection by setting the movie ID of John Travolta to be two. Um, Brad Pitt, let's say he appears in, um, in uh, movie 100. Imagine we have you know more than just these movies. Nicolas Cage, uh, let's give him like 51. Samuel Jackson, Jackson, we know that appears in Pulp Fiction too, so let's give it that. Uh, Bruce Willis, uh, let's just do like 66. So in here now, we have, we're sharing the actor's table and the movie's table are sharing a column, which is the ID of the movie. And in this way, then we are able to tell what actors belong to what movies, or what movies have what actors. Now there is one complication here that we're not going to get into, which is John Travolta 
has acted on many different motives, right? So actually, this this relationship we call a one-to-many relationship. Thank you, Ken. Um, <laughs> because one record here can wait. Uh, one record here can have many records of this, or it's also say like many records of the actors table belong to one uh, record or one movie in the movie's table. Uh, they'll, so that's one, um, there is many to many relationship with one record on one table can uh, relate to many records on, wait, uh, where many records on one table can relate to many other records on another table. Um, can I admire some of the others? It's one to one, one to many, one to many. Mm -hmm. So there's one to one where data, data can relate one record uh, straight to one other record. Uh, one to many and many to many relationships. Um, <laughs> so, cool. So then, um, Karen mentioned something that is important, which is uh, the concept of a primary key. So we say that something that uniquely identifies the movies, uh, like the ID, we will want that to be the primary key. And this is, you know, these tables, these tables are, we can think of these tables with IDs as, and if, especially if those IDs are what are known as the primary key, we can think of them as like arrays. Like if you have, if you know the ID, if you know the primary key of a, of a table, like say like the movies table, let's say I know um, the ID two, accessing that record, getting that record will be really fast. Because what happens is like the database is, is doing a lot of uh, fancy stuff. One of those is hashing, just like what we learn on the hash tables. Uh, so it's gonna keep, Anything you said, this is the primary key. I want to know. I know that this is all going to be unique. Um, it's going to arrange it in a way similar to what hash maps do, which is allowing you to get that record. If you know the ID, if you know the primary key of a record, it's going to let you uh, get that really fast. Um, cool. So, yeah, primary keys are just like a um, primary key. Oh, this is this, this is like the example. And the ID column is key to accomplishing it. In fact, it's so key <laughs> that we know it as a primary key. Let's say like Y primary key. What is the benefit of a primary key? So database operations like searching for records are faster because an index is used um, based on the primary key. Now, using the primary key can easily identify and find unique rows in the database table. They allow you to update, delete any only specific records by uniquely identifying them. So something that is uniquely identifying a record on a table, um, we want it to be a primary key. Uh, you, as the developers, will dictate what is a primary key and what is not. Most of the time, we're going to have primary keys be IDs that uniquely identify an item. Um, so, that is some of the internals. This is the example that we talked about earlier. So, this is the example where we would know this example will work. If we know that one that one movie has strictly one director, what kind of relationship would that be? As we mentioned them earlier, one to one, right? Um, database relationships. Um, I think I don't. I'm not sure if we have linked this, 
but um, I really like some of them that are very visual. Let's see images. Yeah, this one. For instance, one school uh, has only one head teacher or one director. Um, uh, and a relationship one to many is like one school has many teachers, right? And a many to many will be a pupil. Um, a student will have many lessons, right? Multiple students will have the multiple uh, lessons. This is a way to identify. It. Oh, these are here like this um, in in uh, database schematics. This uh, line sort of here means one, um, and then this three sort of I don't know how to call it a, a fork um, means many. Cool. So that's some. Those are some of the relationships. Now, so with with all this, uh, maybe on whiteboards on a sheet of paper, um, talk to your neighbors um, and try to do the schematic of a database for Facebook. I try to think about what are some of the tables that Facebook would use. What are some of the like the MVP tables, the ones that you know, if without those, Facebook wouldn't work. Um, if you were building a very rough, very basic uh, version of Facebook. So, talk to whoever is sitting next to you. Uh, I could get you some paper um, or uh, whiteboards.
he's going to have one. No, I was about to say that. 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 No, I was about to Thank you. 
second one. Two,
Cool. So what are some of the tables that um, you guys found that was like essential for uh, um, Facebook to work? So what are some of the columns that this table will have? What are some of the columns that the user should have, the user's table? Like, like if you go, basically if you go to like sign up for Facebook, you see you have to fill out that form with um, a bunch of information. Probably all that information is saved in the user's table. Um, you know, it could be like email, password. email, password, uh, DOB, what else? Name, age. Age will be calculated probably with data of correct. Address? Really? So if Facebook asks for an address? Like credit card and all that. Missing important 
friends. So I'll, I think one more important than that. Because friends, friends is important, uh, but friends, friends is a little bit complicated. But what about the thing that you go to Facebook to post? What are some of the columns that this could have? I understand. One more. Number of likes. Yeah. Um, like and and likes. What else? Contact user. A message. Uh, maybe what type of post it is. So can you post? You can post like a a video, yeah. an image, just text. Uh, so, oh, we do we do need to express the relationship between a post. You know, who owns a post, right? Um, that could be something like a user ID. User ID that well, this ID, this user should have an ID. Because um, how else are you gonna know? Or it could be. It could be through like a username. Some some websites that are don't uh, where you register it not by name or email. They use like a unique um, username. I wonder if I don't know if in GitHub you can change your username. I don't think you can change it, but I don't know. Um, that could be you know something that uniquely identifies a user, or it doesn't need to be a user. Some something that uniquely identifies some. So the users will should have an ID to uniquely identify you. Why do we want to uniquely identify you? To you. get your information because other people might be exactly the same name, date of birth, um, and so on. Like, have you ever like searched for your own name on Facebook? Yeah. You realize that you're not the other one. Yeah. Your name or not. Yeah. Maybe, maybe some of yours. Yeah. That could be like a username that says the next year. Yeah. But so here in we'll, we'll relate this ID to the user uh, to the post. We know that, for instance, this is our one-to-many relationship. Because one, one, one user can have many posts. I don't, I don't know if you can post, you co-post. I don't, I don't think you can have more than one owner of a post. Um, cool. Friends, friends is an interesting one because friends is a relationship between users and users. Um, so we could it could have it could be something like um, let's say the owner let's say this table could have something like owner ID and then friend ID the owner ID let's say um, the owner ID could be like the Let's say, let's say the owner ID is ID1, and I'm ID1. And then if I'm friends with uh, Suzette, then that will be the friend ID. And then I, in, in this table, um, there are going to be multiple rock records where the owner ID will be my ID. Um, and if, the, you know, if I'm friends with the entire class, then we're going to have 30-something um, records, and the friend ID will be changing for every single. And then for the opposite, which is if not only um, with uh, Facebook, you can have now there's this thing that you can follow people. You need to be their friend, right? Email uh, <laughs> that's well, because when you do when you befriend something, somebody, 
you both get friends in the middle. It's not like, it's not a one-way relationship. It's automatically a two-way relationship, right? Yeah, Shane? Um, it's also usually like friends with judgment. Uh, friends with judgment, yeah. Any of them? Yeah, that would be, uh, that would be a, definitely a little bit more complicated. Um, then maybe there is just a table called relationships or, or friendships where one is like, it could be something like this, where we have basically two columns. Um, maybe, yeah, owner ID or friend ID. Yeah, this one will be a little bit more complicated. Uh, anything else that we found about the thinking about how to create a database for Facebook? You know, like what what other relationships are here? Like a user can belong to many groups. Uh, right? If a user can attend many events, maybe a user can be the admin of a few groups. Or a user can also host a few events uh, and so on. So let's see, so that's all cool. Let's see actually uh, a database um, in our computer. So open open Postgres, if you don't have it running, just do command space bar Postgres. Yes. Just do, um, Postgres Mac download and, and download it from there. Postgres QL. Just go to Postgres QL dot org and hit download if you this is if you don't have it first check if you have it because uh, we tried to install it on all of you when you came for the first day and then here hit uh, Mac OS if you're a Mac or Windows otherwise say that again uh, command space bar and then type in Postgres and if you see this elephant and you can if this opens, then you have it. Can uh, click the Mac. Postgres app. This. So this it seems that for Mac you can just go to Postgres uh, app dot com. You can get there from Postgres dot org too. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, go to Postgres postgresql.org and then see the instructions for Windows.
What's up? Okay, so everyone has uh, something like this. Everyone seen something like this? Cool. So I'm going to share with you uh, a file. So I didn't realize that you don't have, you probably don't have as many databases as I do here. Uh, it's probably one just with your name. Uh, so those are not very interesting. In fact, that database is empty. Um, so let's, let's have, there are some online that we could experiment with. Uh, so let's use one of these. So I'm going to share this on Slack. Share this file. So this is a database. Um, let's see. See if this works. So this file that I just shared, download that file. It's called usda.sql. This file has the, well, the, that file, if you look at the content, it has some SQL commands for creating a USDA database to create a copy of it for us to experiment with. And we're gonna be creating databases like that very soon. So make sure that go to the terminal to whatever you create you downloaded that file. In my case I think 
to a spec stop. Um, oh no, it was not here. Maybe. Oh, I saved it in. Cool. So. I have I have located my SQL in here in my terminal. Cool. Everyone found their file in the terminal. So so what this is going to do um, the command that we're going to run here is psql dash f usda dot sql so psql is a command that we we can use to interact with our databases uh, well we, in the future what we actually want to do is uh, interact with our databases using javascript uh, not psql directly so let's run this. Let's see. So you see, this is creating some stuff. Uh, at some point, it should finish. Cool. So what we can see here is that that created created a few tables. Uh, it made some copies, and then it altered some tables. Yes. Say that again. Command not found. Um, wait, do you? If you do. Oh. It might be because we just installed uh, Postgres, but here, let's see. PSQL command. Why could that be? I see. I, I, actually, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Man. Yeah. It worked for you? Uh, it, might be, it might have worked for some of you, I think. Um, no, I think it might be that you need to like log out and log back in, something like that, to, for the command to be available. Uh, if I do, like, which... Actually, yeah. Let's just. We don't really need. Uh, we don't really need it uh, for now. So let's just use a service. So let's actually just look at what we were going to do here. Um, so for accessing data in these databases, uh, we're going to be learning the fundamentals of a query language known as SQL. Uh, SQL. So sometimes it's pronounced SQL, SQL. And that stands for the structured query language. Uh, this is similar to a programming language, but it's, a not, it's not a uh, full-fledged uh, programming language. It's a query language that is going to let us query our databases. Uh, the good thing is that SQL reads um, very much like English. So for instance, this is one example. So we have select star from movies where movies that director ID is equal to 32. So I guess I could show you an example here if um, let's see what databases do I have so that I can show you. Here, for instance, I have how the Todos API database. So, for the Todos API that we were playing with, I created a database so that uh, you could add Todos and not uh, lose them after you had add, 
them. So I'm going to try to access that one and see what tables we have. Do PSQL. Don't worry if you don't worry. Don't worry if you cannot run this command. Um, oh, actually, I. So this in here, I have some tables. Uh, just here. So I do this. Wait, not. List tables backslash B. Let's see. This table be using sequence. So what I want to do is want to list the tables that I have in this database. Um, we can do that with backslash d according to the documentation for some reason is not fully working. Oh wait. Um, I'm forgetting it. List tables postgres. DT. Oh, I'm missing the T. Yeah, so here, this is the to do's API that we were using has these three tables it has a to do's table, a user, uh, and a winners. This winners was for the like. Uh, the Easter egg, but basically we have two tables. So if we can, if I want to select uh, from users, what I can do is literally select star. What does star means regularly? All, right? And in, in this case, it means select all the columns of the of the users table. Um, and then this is do that select star from users. This is select all the columns uh, from the users table. And I hit enter. Oh, I forgot the from from users. Select star from users, uh, and I have two users, uh, myself and Black Panther. So then we could say let's say select uh, select star from users. Uh, where the username is equal to black panther. What do you think this is going to give me? The greatest movie of all time. <laughs> the greatest movie of all time. Um, wait, wait. Oh, I think this has to be single quotes. So it gives you a user with this username uh, because here is like the where clause is a condition and sort of like a filter. Uh, so here I'm selecting star from users. This will select all the columns, all the records from the users table. Uh, and the where is sort of filtering that. It's only saying I only want to select where the username uh, is equal to black. Um, so this is basically how more or less the structure of SQL abstracted it will be like this select columns from table uh, where some conditions Yes, Owen um, I'm not sure like um I'm not Oh, yeah that when you open the that SQL file yeah, that is that's just because the, um, that file that we downloaded, um, some of you couldn't really run it, um, but that file, that file looks looks like this. Uh, that file looks like this. It opens in VS Code because 
that file is a SQL code. This, we're going to learn how to write some of this. Um, and we can see that there are some commands create table that are going to create table, surprisingly enough. Um, we see some table for weight. Uh, these are, what is this? Copy data. These are some information about maybe a, an inspector. Um, I'm not sure, but yeah, this will be some data. But this is not this is not the database itself. This is like this is how we can create a database. The database lives in your computer, and in this case, um, it will be it will be popping up as one of these uh, no postman Postgres. It will appear here in Postgres as one of your things. And here, uh, the one that we are currently seeing is the Todos API. So, going back to this example, for instance, let's say, let's look at the to-do. So, we could do select star from to-dos. We have this for to-dos. And we can do something. Let's say we're only interested in the text. So, instead, how, what would we change here? Let's say I'm not interested in the ID, I'm not interested in the owner or whether the to-do is completed, but only in the text. Lewis? Um, change star to text. Change star to text. That gives me the text for all the to-dos. Now, what would I need to do if, I only, if I'm only interested in... Oh, actually, this is not... I'm only interested in the to-do that has 000 as the ID. How do we add a condition? Chunk. We need the where clause where ID is equal to 000. So do that. Oh, didn't work. Uh, no operator match is given the name and argument types. You might need to add explicit typecasting. So that is because um, we haven't seen this yet. But these columns, we need to we need to go into we're going to need to specify what type of data they hold. And this the type of data are similar to the ones in JavaScript, which is like strings, numbers. Um, well, in database, in databases will be integers, um, text for text that can change um, length. We're gonna use some, something called varchar and so on. In this case, this ID is not a number, so I cannot really do it like that. Uh, it is a varchar or a, uh, in JavaScript written jargon a string. We get that. So we see that the text for this um, to do matching ID 00 is just one. Cool. So, questions or comments uh, regarding you know this this is basically the the rough basics of um, getting information from a database, and we have some practice. So, what if we have this is not a very interesting database, but um, I could show you a more interesting database. The one that this this database called Game on DB, that was a database for our my team's capstone project. So let's see if I can connect to that. Yeah, DT. So this database has a little bit more tables. It has an events table, a player's events, has a sports, sports format, users, and user sports. So this, this was an app where, similar to Facebook, a user can go to a sporting event. So uh, let's look at the users, for instance. Let's do select star from users. Let's see how many columns this has. 
Well, uh, it has it has some comms. It has ID, full name, username, email, something called password digest, zip code, and profile photos, and some experience points. Let's say let's only list let's only list the username. Um, and if you want to specify more than one column, you do that with a comma. Uh, username and maybe yeah, let's do ID and username. We have this many users. We have eight users, right? And these are their usernames. Now, these users belong, or these users ha can have multiple and attend to multiple events, right? So let's take a look at the. So we have one table here called player events. This table, the, the call, let's look at that table. Select, start from players, events. That table has information like this. Uh, what this table has is an event ID, a player ID, team, and a match judge. Um, so these events in this app were for you to go and play a pickup sport. Right? So you will um, you will register to go to an event. And here, this table is the table that is connecting users or players with events. So we can see here, for instance, player with ID two is going to event with ID one. Um, player with ID 3 is also going to event uh, 1. Player with ID 1 is also going to that event. And then there are some others. So in here, um, then something called joins come into place. Uh, we're just going to give a rough touch. So, but joins come into place when you actually want to get data from multiple call for multiple tables. Let's say. <coughs> Let's say in this example, going back to this example of movies and actors, um, maybe we want to get, you know, for the query as, for a query like, we want to get all the actors that belong to Pulp Fiction. Right? We will need to get data from two different tables, right? Uh, so what we can do is join those two tables, um, as we can see here. So. Um, this is a great article. You should read it. A visual understanding of SQL joins, uh, and there are basically four types of of uh, joins. The ones that we're going to be seeing more commonly is just a simple join, or also known as inner join. Uh, there is full outer join, left outer join, and cross join. I have never had to do a cross join. Um, and then let's look at this um, example, for instance. So actually, yeah, re read this article. This article visually is great. Um, it's linked on the lecture notes. But let's look at this example that we have here. So imagine we have the we have a school, and we have a schools schools table. Let's imagine we're you know the city of New York, um, and they have a database where they keep a registry of all the schools. And all the teachers, right? And let's say we're interested to know uh, who works at PS one thirty five, uh, public school one thirty five. Um, we could do something like, uh, in this case, we want to know all the teachers of a particular school, right? So we have one table that has the schools and another table that has the teachers. So we could do select first name and last name from the teachers table, right? And we want to know um, what school they work on. So we could do inner join, um, inner join to join the records of the teachers table with the records of the schools table, and then we specify where do you want to join. And here, in this case. We want to join on whenever, whenever in the so the the teachers table will have a school ID to identify 
what teachers belong to what schools. The schools themselves, just like in the same example of the movies or the Facebook, uh, will have an ID that uniquely identifies X school. So in this case, we want to we want to join these two tables, uh, where the teacher, where the teacher school ID matches a school ID in the school's table. And that, in that way, then we can get information about. Um, what teacher works at what school, and in this case, uh, we don't have a where, so this is just going to end up uh, joining all, basically matching all the teachers to all the schools, um, and so on. So this is, you know, this is kind of hard to explain in words. We just need to develop a sense once we start doing it. Um, actually, this, let's look at this example of, of what we were saying. Um, actually, this should be an example of an inner join. Uh, but for instance, this example here, we have, so we had the teacher's table, we had the teacher's table, and we have a table for the schools. Once we join those with inner join, uh, we'll get something like this, where the information of both, ta both tables are displayed into one and are matched like this. So for instance, teacher with ID 1, James Simpson, he works at sc school ID 12, right? And this will be if we, yeah, it, it, in, in more this, uh, <laughs> that's, um, if we have something like this, uh, let's see. The, uh, the, basically, the school table will be something like like this. The, the teacher's table will have only this information, basically. Right? But you are interested in knowing what teachers work at what schools. Um, the, the school's table will look something like this. Right, um, and what, when you join those two tables, what you end up is the result being displayed on one table, uh, where you know you said here, where do you want to join? I want to join where the school ID uh, of the teacher's table matches the ID of the school's table. In this case, that ends up giving us the result as to where James uh, James Simpson works. He works at Lepham Elementary. Uh, we see that Rita works at the same school. Um, I don't know how to spell his name, so I'm not going to try and <laughs> even less the, <laughs> the name, the school name, and, and so on. So this is how we could have information. Joins what what joins allows us to allows to do is to have information in different tables, um, and then join those that those pieces of data to get a more complete picture. Uh, by al allowing us to have the data in separate tables, right? Um, cool. Any questions, comments um, before we get some practice? So, so there is this website. Uh, so we can get started on the. Actually, let's get started on the exit ticket first.
Now there should be something if you refresh. I just uh, I realized that I moved it to the wrong day. Yeah. As far as you can, then as far as you want. Well, actually, let me see. Once you're done with the exit ticket, uh, get started with the databases and SQL lab. We're going to be working in for the rest of the day today and uh, um, for the whole day tomorrow. Uh, it's about, uh, the, the lab is about um, interacting with databases, writing some queries, selecting some information. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can take a look. Uh, give me one sec, I'll, I'll go. Uh, yeah, but that's that's uh, that's fine for now. It, it, it's not there yet. Um, were you able to run like the PSQL command? Yeah. You're able to. Oh yeah. Um, so do PSQL. If you want to see it, you can do PSQL uh, dash F, and then the path to then the path to the file, wherever you have it. Like this way, then. Uh, no, that's that's backslash uh, dash it, or hyphen. Oh, that that's slash. I mean, uh, this one. What do you call this one? Dash, dash oh, hyphen. Well, yeah, I think dash. I mean, I'm sorry, I was in the And then the path to wherever your that SQL file is. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 